hair was a little hard. Dark was too hard, so I wanted to just soften the edge of that. go up to our eyes. When you're doing a, a Asian person, very frequently there is no eyelid line. Now this little girl does have a little bit of an eyelid line showing, but a lot of people, a lot of Asian people, this is a hooded eye and you don't see any of this eyelid line. The, uh, from the eyebrow all the way down to the lash line, it's just fairly flat there. So you won't, you won't even have the lid line, but this particular little girl does have it. Her eyes are dark brown. I'm going to use Burnt Umber for my eye line, my um, eyeball. Burnt Umber for my eyelash line. Right here. They're very flat. Burnt Umber right in here. For my eye, iris, the eyeball. Dirty white, very dirty white for the white of the eye because her her eyes are very squinted and so you don't see a lot, not a lot of light gets in here. This is a very dark area. So I'm going to make this very dirty initially. Then I'm going to take some white and I'm going to add just a touch of clean, just a little bit into the whitest part of the eye just to pull it right back out. The pupil is Payne's Gray, and you want to make sure that the Payne's Gray is very black. Don't get any white mixed in with it. It's the only place on the face you use the Payne's Gray. Let's bring the pupil right in here. And a white gleam. I'm going to put the gleam at 2 o'clock, where the pupil and the iris come together. And it'll go at 2 o'clock on this eye as well. Secondary highlight, cat orange, it comes across from the gleam in the iris of the eye, just to give it a little bit of light. Like the eyelid line is your dark skin tone. The highlights now, because her skin is very yellow, we put a lot of the yellow tones in the skin. For the highlights, what I want you to do is I want you to use, instead of Naples yellow and white, I want you to use white with a little bit of rose matter, just a very little bit. But I want more of a pinkish highlight instead of a yellow highlight. It'll balance this yellow tone out. helps create a balance so your person doesn't look too yellow. That's the only other change is that you change, you alter the, uh, the tone of the highlight to pink instead of yellow. And then she needs a little pretty color in her skin to give her a cheek, give her the cheek area, to put some blush in her face. So I'm going to use my pretty color just like I did on the other painting. I'm adding a little bit of white to it. I'm going to add just a touch of orange to it, just, just so it leans a little, a little more orange. I'm going to come right in here and put some blush in the cheeks. We don't want it to look too pink. As a rule, pretty color goes on the cheeks, the nose, the chin, and the forehead. Or where the darks and the lights come together. I'm going to put some up here underneath where the hair is because we want that area of the skin up there a little darker. I'm going to put some right in here where she has a little bit of a dip, just a very subtle dip around the eye. The eyes are fairly flat on the face. And pretty color in the ear. Her ear is way back here in the shadow, so I'm just going to use some pretty color. And then I'm going to reinforce the shadows on the ear. 
with my dark skin tone. Because it's in such a heavy shadow, I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to it. This little boy is African American and I did my burnt umbering on him just like I would do it on anybody else. He's nice and dark and uh, you see that the shadows are a lot fuller. On our little girl, the shadows were, there were fewer of them. They were fewer and farther between. When you get to the darker skin tones, your shadows get bigger and your highlights get a little more pronounced and smaller. So that makes a big difference. Now what you want to do is you want to put a basic skin tone on him. This brush can't. Excuse my reach. We want to put a basic skin tone on him. We do not use our basic skin tone though. We use the deep flesh. We completely eliminate the, the use of basic skin tone on African American, especially if the person is is very dark. If it's a light skinned person and they look almost Caucasian, you're going to probably paint it more Caucasian. But on a dark skinned person, you want to keep this color nice and rich. You don't want to dilute it down with a lot of white. So this is our deep flesh. And we're going to spread this over all the skin lightly to tint the canvas. This isn't the darkest skin tone. This is the second skin color we mixed. It's kind of golden. It's rose matter, cat orange, and raw sienna. Move this around on here. If it went on too bright, just squish it around a little bit. It'll soften right back up. Lots of color. It's fun to paint people that have dark skin like this because you get to use a lot of neat reflected lights and I'll talk to you about that in just a minute, but it's a lot of fun. Take your bunny brush and using a circular motion just get rid of your brush stroke. Soften that down into the canvas. Okay. Very quickly let's go ahead and just do his features. We'll put his eyes on. His eyes are brown. We're going to use burnt umber for your eyelash line. Great for your pupil. Nice and black. It's great for this pupil. Dirty white for the white of the eye. Yeah, not too much of the white of the eye shows over there. Cat orange for the secondary highlight. We'll go from about nine to about six. And then white for the gleam in the eye. At about two o'clock where the pupil and the iris come together. It could also go on the opposite side at 10 o'clock. But if you do it at 10 o'clock here, you gotta do it at 10 o'clock there, and then your secondary habit swims around to the other side. His lips are pretty color, just like on in anybody else's portrait. Just add a little more color to the lips. And then we want to reinforce the shadows on his face. You're going to use your dark skin tone, but what I want you to do is I want you to add just a touch more of your doxazine purple, just a touch, to your dark skin tone. So you're almost leaning into purple. And then you come into these areas where he's very dark, and you reinforce those shadows. Purple is a wonderful color for dark skin like this. It's a great shadow color. His shadows are going to be bigger. They're going to cover more area than on the little girl because his skin is darker. Right in here, he's got lots of shadow.
rub that color in there. Pull that shadow down around the eye. And of course anywhere else where you see that you need it. I'm going to soften that with my bunny brush. Circular motion. Careful around your eyes. You always put them on. And then we want to reinforce our highlights. The highlights are a little more um, localized. I'm going to use white and Naples yellow. And then you can add some yellow ochre to it if you want to, if you just need a little more yellow. But the white and Naples yellow should be just fine. And you come into these areas that are light and you highlight them. They're not big. You don't have a big area of highlight. You have smaller areas of highlight. going to lay the highlights on for now. I'm not going to try blending them in. Lay them in there. Put a highlight on the end of his nose. See his highlight above his lip. On his chin. Just a little bit on the chin. I may have gotten just a little bit too much there. And then we want to come in with our pretty colors. We want to add that blood under the skin. On the pretty color, you don't, don't soften it down with your white as much. You can a little bit, but be careful. You want to use it fairly, fairly strong. And that comes where this dark and the light come together and it puts blood under the skin. marries the two. Oops, a little bit too much. Not too much color, just a little too much paint. should be lots of color in the ear and you get lots of pretty color around the nose. I'm going to darken that chin up a little bit. I got a little too light. Some pretty color in there. We'll detail out the nose a little bit by taking our burnt umber and reinforcing the nostrils. Our dark skin color plus purple and we want to reinforce this upper lip. This upper lip is darker than his lower lip. Very dark. Tucks right in there. So we want to really darken that up. Just like that. And then pull it up so we'll shape it a little bit. It's a little low on this one side so we'll just pop it right up there. Shadow it beneath that lip. Take some of our dark skin tones and we'll reinforce the shadow on the sides of the nostrils. And tuck that nostril back there just a little bit. And put some highlight on the bottom lip. Keep it looking wet. Put his eyelashes on. His eyelashes are burnt umber. And he has very curly hair. Now his hair is going to be black, but I don't want you to make the eyelashes black. I want you to keep them burnt umber. If you make them black, it's too heavy of a color for the face. You need to stay with the burnt umber. Because his hair is very curly, his eyelashes tend to be curly. So you want to really scoop those up. Kind of curl them as they come up. I have to do 
too much here. I don't want to go back to girl. Okay. His eyebrows are dark as well, but again, don't use paint gray. Just use your burnt ember. Keep them very soft at the edge. A little bit will go a long way when you're talking about the face and uh, dark colors. Let's reinforce the shadow in the ear with our dark skin color, plus a little bit of extra uh, dioxazine purple. Reinforce those dark colors. And let's reinforce some of the pretty color in the ear. The ear tends to have lots of color. And then your highlights. The areas that kind of poke out are going to be 